Welcome to the Road to Retirement series. This is the Route 3 Destination in Sight meeting, which is geared for members who are within about three years of their retirement. Hopefully you've had a chance to take a look at Route 1 and Route 2 on our website, but during this webinar you're going to be learning about different annuity options, retirement criteria, and the benefits that you have for being a member with the ASRS. To kick off today's webinar, we're going to check in with our ASRS news team. Now, from Arizona's retirement headquarters, you're watching ASRS Route 3 News. Everything you need to know about your retirement. And now, Arizona's number one news team. It's a good day to retire. I'm Steve. And I'm Athena. And here's what's making news. Welcome to Route 3, Destination in Sight, in our Road to Retirement series. You may have seen our Route 1, Your Journey Begins, and Route 2, Map Your Progress, e-learnings, on our website. If not, check them out when you get home. You'll want to register for Route 4, Next Exit Retirement, when you're about six months away from retirement. Topics we'll be covering today include the Defined Benefit Plan and Formula, Retirement Criteria, Annuity Options, Can You Afford to Retire, Service Purchase, Retirement Timelines, and Member Responsibilities. So, let's go ahead and get started. To get started, we first want to make you familiar with the type of plan Arizona State Retirement System provides. The ASRS is a 401A defined benefit plan. We are a cost sharing plan, which means you and your employer share the cost of your retirement benefit. The employee and the employer contributions are invested to generate revenue to pay the retiree a lifetime pension. Your account balance consists of your contributions plus interest. When you retire, your pension payments are initially paid out from this account upon retirement. This account is exhausted within the first six to eight years of your retirement. It is at this point that your pension is paid out from the employer contributions and the ASRS trust fund, guaranteeing for a lifetime benefit. Now you will learn about the components of the defined benefit formula and how the ASRS calculates your monthly pension. When thinking about this formula, consider the following two goals. The first is reaching normal retirement or coming as close as possible, which means an unreduced pension benefit to you based on the formula. The second goal is to increase your benefit and retire with the highest benefit possible. One very important thing to know about the defined benefit plan is when you retire, the amount of your monthly retirement benefit is determined by a formula, not the balance in your account. The formula takes your total credited service times the graded multiplier times your average monthly salary to calculate your normal unreduced benefit. We will break down the components of the formula over the next few slides. Credited service is earned in different ways. The most common way to earn credited service is through the retirement contributions that are withheld from your paycheck. When ASRS receives at least one contribution in a month, you are credited with one month of service. This includes previous ASRS service, as long as when you left your ASRS employer, you also left the funds on account. When you return to another ASRS employer, you began building on top of what was already earned. Purchasing service, known as service purchase, is also included in credited service and we'll talk about that later in the presentation. The second component of the formula is the graded multiplier. 
the graded multiplier times your years of credited service determines the percentage your average monthly compensation you will receive as your benefit when you retire. As you can see, the more years of service you have, the higher the graded multiplier. So if you have 27 years of service, your graded multiplier would be 2.20%. The graded multiplier caps out at 2.30% at 30 years. Here are some examples to show you how this works. 20 years times 2.15% you will receive 43% of your average monthly compensation as your lifetime pension. 25 years times 2.20%, you will receive 55% of your average monthly compensation as your lifetime pension. At 30 years times 2.30%, you will receive 69% of your average monthly compensation as your lifetime pension. So would it be possible to increase your benefit to work more than 30 years? Yes, if you increase any part of the formula then your benefit will increase. And Now you may be wondering is it possible to earn a hundred percent of your average monthly compensation? The answer is yes if you decide to work a mere 43 and a half years. It sounds like a long time. We have many members who actually work even longer. And in those instances, they earn more at retirement than they did as employees. The third component of the defined benefit formula is the average monthly compensation. There are two terms used when calculating your average monthly salary. The first term is compensation pay. This is the money you are paid to do your job. Compensation pay includes base pay, overtime, and for school employees it also includes additional contracts, 301 monies, and career ladder. The other term is termination pay. This is money you will receive because you are terminating from your employer. Termination pay includes annual leave, personal time off, incentives and sick leave. Now for the third part of the formula, your ASRS membership date will determine how your average monthly compensation will be calculated. For a salary calculation, the ASRS goes back 10 years of contribution history from your termination date and takes an average of the highest 36 or 60 consecutive months of salary within the 10-year time frame, depending on your membership date. If your membership date was prior to 1984, two calculations are involved, but only one calculation can be used. If members will be using termination pay, this is included in the 60-month calculation method. Then ASRS will determine which is higher, the calculation of 60 consecutive months including termination pay or the highest 36 consecutive months calculation. In order to use termination pay, the ASRS must receive contributions from your termination pay. Now the majority of our members fall into the middle category. For those members who started between January 1st, 1984 through June 30th, 2011, the ASRS will go back 10 years from your termination date and take an average of the highest 36 consecutive months of compensation pay only. For all members starting on or after January 1st, 1984, termination pay is no longer used in the calculation. The final category is if your membership date is July 1st, 2011 or later. And in this calculation, ASRS will use the highest consecutive 60 months of compensation in the last 10 years, also excluding termination pay. Let's check back in with the ASRS news team for a closer look at how your pension is baked.
ASRS Route 3 News continues. Beth is here in the newsroom today to share with us a great recipe. Welcome to the show, Beth. Thank you, Athena. It's great to be here today. So, Beth, what will you be baking up for us today? Well, today I'll be using the delicious pension recipe to show our viewers how their pension is derived. As you just learned, your monthly pension is based on a formula. The defined benefit formula is credited service times the graded multiplier times your average monthly compensation, which equals your unreduced monthly pension upon retirement. Let's do it. First, the credited service. Then, the graded multiplier. And finally, your average monthly compensation. And then, mix it all up. Of course, you can bake a bigger pension by adding more of the ingredients. As your compensation and your years of service increase, the higher the graded multiplier and the larger your unreduced pension will be. You'll need to bake this at 350 degrees for as long as you work. And like magic, your pension is done. Thanks for the demonstration, Beth. Now back to your meeting. We've talked about what type of plan the ASRS provides, and we've talked about how the ASRS calculates your pension. The next question you probably have is, when can I retire? Normal retirement means a pension benefit without a reduction. This is also determined by the date of your ASRS membership. For those whose membership began before July 1, 2011, there is more than one way to reach normal retirement. The criteria for normal retirement is 80 points, which is the sum of your age and your years of service. The great thing about the 80 point system is that there is no age limit. We had a member age 48 with 32 years of service who was able to and did take a normal retirement. The next way to reach normal retirement is age 62 with at least 10 years of service. Now if you add 62 and 10 you fall short of the 80 points but it's still considered normal retirement. Or you can be age 65 with any number of years of service. Now, whichever one of these happens first is when you have reached normal retirement with ASRS. The law regarding normal retirement criteria was changed for new members as of July 1, 2011, and eliminates the point-based retirement. Effective July 1, 2011 and after, normal retirement is age 55 with 30 years or more of service, age 60 with 25 years or more of service, age 62 with 10 or more years, and again age 65 with no minimum requirement for years. The ASRS also offers an early retirement for our members, but now there is an age limit. If you plan to retire early, you must be at least 50 years old with five years of service. Early retirement still pays you a lifetime benefit, but it will be permanently reduced based on your age and years of service at that time. This slide will allow you to see the reduction percentages involved in choosing to retire early. 55 years of age with 21 years of service, the member gets 75% of what the normal retirement benefit would have been. 
based on the formula. Remember that your normal pension is already a fraction of what you are earning as an employee. In taking an early retirement, it will be even more reduced. If this person's normal retirement benefit is calculated at $1,000 a month, and they take this early retirement, 75% of that would be paid to them, which is $750 for the rest of their life. Working one more year at age 56 with 22 years of service, the member would get 94% of normal retirement monthly benefit. Another thing you can do to increase your benefit is to wait until you're 58 years old with 21 years of service. This means the member will get 97% of normal retirement monthly benefit. And the last example we have is someone that purchases some service. Two years of service at age 55 with 21 years of service would give them 23 years of service and they will get 94% of their normal retirement benefit. Now remember we will be discussing service purchase a bit later in the presentation. Many people are not quite ready to retire when they reach normal retirement. You don't have to stop working when you reach normal retirement. If you work beyond normal retirement it's considered late retirement. If actively contributing, the retirement benefit continues to grow based on the formula. If you continue to work beyond normal retirement, your credited service will continue to increase. Therefore, by working longer, your pension will also increase. Once you've reached normal retirement, it will be in your best interest to retire as soon as you quit working for your ASRS employer. Because once you quit working, the components of the formula, which is your service, the graded multiplier, and your average monthly compensation, will also stop increasing. So there's no benefit to wait to retire. If you stop working and become inactive, the IRS requires you to take your retirement at age 72 or risk facing IRS penalties. The ASRS begins notifying you to take your pension when you are around 65. This chart demonstrates how three different people who are the same age and make the same salary but have different service totals will have a different retirement benefit. It also shows you how early retirement reductions can affect your monthly benefit. The Long-Term Disability Plan is an income replacement program if you are unable to do the duties of your job due to a long-term illness, injury, or disability. There is a six-month waiting period from the date of your disability before payments will begin. If you are eligible, the Long-Term Disability Benefit can pay up to 66 and two-thirds of your current monthly compensation. While on long-term disability, you will continue to accrue credited service to a possible maximum of 30 years or until you reach normal retirement criteria. However, you need to know that if you refund your money or retire, you are no longer eligible. For further information, check our website for the ASRS Long-Term Disability Employee Guide and contact your employer for the forms. We just got some breaking news regarding traffic on your drive home. Let's check in with Sarah from the ASRS News Team. ASRS News Traffic Update. Let's check in on traffic with Sarah in the ASRS Traffic Copter. Steve, there's quite a traffic jam this morning as a lot of members are working their way toward retirement. It seems the backup is mostly due to their not knowing what exit to take. 
You can get off on the early exit, but this yields a lifetime reduction to your pension based on your age and years of service. If you wait for the normal exit, there is no reduction. As you can see here, criteria for this exit depends on your membership date. If you work beyond normal retirement, you can drive onto the late retirement off-ramp where if you are an active member, your pension will continue to grow based on the benefit formula. It's important to know what exit is best for you. Back to you, Steve. Thank you for driving home the point, Sarah. Hang in there, members. Watch for those bumps in the road. In this section, we will discuss the seven different annuity options available to you at the time of retirement. Consider these two important questions when making your election. How much money do you want at retirement? And do you want or need to leave money to a beneficiary? There are seven options, but you can only elect one and only you can determine which is the right choice for you and your family. If you have your online estimate with you, take it out now and follow along as we discuss the annuity options. If not, you can follow along on our slides. The first block of the estimate shows your personal information, your projected retirement date, and the data elements of the defined benefit formula used to calculate the estimated amounts. We encourage you to use your online estimator to get an idea of what you will earn at the time of retirement. If your monthly benefit is $100 or more, you will get a monthly lifetime benefit, regardless of the option that you select. Right now, we'll go quickly through and name the options, and then we're going to break each one down over the next few slides. So the sum of your formula is straight life annuity. The next three are the term certain options, 5, 10, and 15 years. And the final three are the 100 percent, 66 and 2 thirds percent, and 50% join and survivor options. The important thing to know is, regardless of which option you choose, you, the retiree, will receive a monthly lifetime benefit. When selecting a pension option, you need to know about the spousal consent law. This law requires any non-retired married member to name their spouse for at least 50% of any survivor benefit. Retiree members must select at least a joint and survivor 50% option with their spouse as the beneficiary. Your spouse can waive their community property interest in your retirement account, but only by signing a notarized waiver, which is also called a spousal consent form. The straight life annuity is designed to pay you, the member, the most amount of money for the rest of your lifetime. This annuity will pay your survivors your remaining account balance upon your death. Now remember that it takes six to eight years for your account balance to be exhausted. If you, the member, live beyond that, then you continue to receive a lifetime benefit. But if you pass away beyond six to eight years, that means there will be nothing left in the account to be paid out to the beneficiaries. Be aware that if you select the straight life annuity, you are locked in and can't change to another option. The straight life annuity option allows you to choose multiple primary beneficiaries, which can include people, trusts, and or organizations. With any option, you can designate secondary beneficiaries, which can also be people, trusts, and or organizations. The next three options on your benefit estimate are the terms certain, 5, 10, and 15 year. Notice how as the term increases, your benefit decreases. This is because the term certain options guarantee beneficiary benefits for a certain period of your retirement years. 
your benefit is reduced based on your age at retirement and the length of the term that you choose. Remember, you the retiree will receive a lifetime benefit. If you pass away before all payments in the term are made, the remaining payments will be paid to your beneficiaries. The 5, 10, 15 year term certain annuity option allows you to choose multiple primary beneficiaries, which can be people, trusts, and or organizations. Remember, all seven annuity options allow you to designate multiple secondary beneficiaries as well. Let's break each of these options down. If you choose the five-year term certain, that's a total of 60 reduced payments. If you pass away after the 50th payment, there will be 10 payments left to pay to your beneficiaries. After the remaining 10 payments have been made, the account will be closed. Here's an example of why you might want to choose a term certain. Maybe your car will be paid off in five years, and if you pass away within that time frame, you know your spouse or children can rely on your pension money to make that car payment. If you choose the 10-year term certain, that's a total of 120 reduced payments to you, the member. If you pass away after the 118th payment, that means there will be two payments left to pay to your beneficiaries. After the remaining two payments have been made, the account will be closed. If you choose the 15-year term certain, that's a total of 180 reduced payments to you, the member. If you pass away after the 180th payment, that means there will be nothing left to pay to your beneficiaries. Now there are some examples why you might choose a 10 or 15 year term certain. Maybe your mortgage will be paid off in the next 15 years. And if something were to happen to you within that time frame, you want to make sure that your family will be able to continue to make that payment. You may be wondering, can you change your annuity option after it's selected? There are two circumstances that will allow you to change your option if your beneficiary passes away before you, or if you get a divorce from your beneficiary. Then you can either select a new beneficiary, which is always an option for you, or you can elect to take the straight life annuity option. This means you will jump back up to the higher paid amount each month. But when you pass away, there is likely nothing in the account to be paid to your beneficiaries. If you outlive the 5, 10, or 15 year term certain, then ASRS will automatically change your election to straight life annuity, paying you more for the remainder of your lifetime. The joint and survivor annuity options are designed to pay you a reduced monthly lifetime benefit and pays a lifetime benefit to your primary beneficiary upon your death. By looking at the sample estimate, notice that there is a reduction when compared to the straight life annuity. This reduction is based on the age of the retiree and the age of the primary beneficiary. If a member elects a joint and survivor annuity option, this will pay the retiree for their lifetime. Once the retiree passes away, then the beneficiary, which must be only one person, will receive a benefit for their lifetime, either 100 percent, 66 and two-thirds percent, or 50 percent of the retiree's pension. If you select any of the joint and survivor annuity options, you must select one primary beneficiary, which must be a person. It cannot be a trust or organization. You can designate secondary beneficiaries, which can be multiple people, trusts, or organizations. Secondaries will only receive payment if both the retiree and the primary beneficiary pass away when there is still funds left in your account. The joint and survivor options will never continue to a third lifetime benefit. Let's talk specifically about the 100% joint and survivor option. If you choose this option, you will receive a reduced pension. 
when the retiree passes away, the beneficiary will receive the same amount for the remainder of their lifetime. Now, why might you choose this type of option? Well, let's say your mortgage is $1,700 a month. You know that your beneficiary is dependent on your pension to make that payment. When you pass away, they could receive that same amount that you received, ensuring they can continue to make that payment upon your passing. If electing the 66 and 2 thirds join and survivor option, you'll see that your reduction is a little less than it was with the 100% option. When you pass away, your beneficiary will receive 66 and 2 thirds of your benefit for the rest of their lifetime. What about the 50% joint and survivor option? If you choose this option, you will receive a reduced pension. It will be less of a reduction than the other two options were. When you pass away, your beneficiary will receive 50% of your benefit for the rest of their lifetime. Here's an example of why you might choose 66 and 2 thirds or the 50% option. Let's say your beneficiary has their own income, but they do rely on your pension for a $300 monthly car payment. When you pass away, they do not need the full amount you receive during your lifetime, but they will need something to continue to make that car payment. It's important to review these options with your beneficiaries to make sure you are making the right decision based on your wants and needs. If you decide to choose one of the joint and survivor options, there are age restrictions, but only if your beneficiary is not a spouse. For the 100% option, your non-spouse beneficiary can be no more than 10 years younger than you. For the 66 and 2 thirds option, your non-spouse beneficiary cannot be more than 24 years younger than you. And for the 50% option, there are no age restrictions. There are two events that will allow you to change your join and survivor option. If your beneficiary passes away before you, or you get a divorce from your beneficiary, then you can either select a new beneficiary, and that beneficiary must fall within the age restriction for the option you choose if they're not your spouse, or you can elect to take the straight life annuity option. This means you will jump back up to that higher paid amount each month, but when you pass away, there is likely nothing in the account to be paid to a beneficiary. So if I select a joint survivor 100% option and my beneficiary passes away, can I make my two-year-old niece my beneficiary? No, because she does not meet the age restriction for that option. The annuity options are very competitive. Let's check back in with Ryan on the ASRS News Team to compare and contrast them. ASRS News Sports. As we gear up for the big game, Ryan is here in the Sports Center to give you an overview of the competing teams so that you can make an informed decision on which one will champion your retirement. Ryan? Thank you, Steve. As your retirement season kicks off, it's going to be a tough matchup for you to make a big decision. Three highly talented teams are going head to head. Let's take a closer look at the competition. Team Straight Life Annuity is an offensive powerhouse as it covers you with the highest pension for your lifetime. However, their defense is a little lacking, as they don't leave anything behind for your beneficiaries beyond an average of six to eight years. There's also Team Term Certain and Team Joint and Survivor, both of whom offer a reduced pension, but are great defensive teams. Team Term Certain covers your beneficiary, trust, or organization for the first five, 10, or 15 years of your retirement while Team Joint and Survivor possesses greater stamina as it leaves the ability to cover another individual after your passing for the rest of their life. When making a decision between these three teams, there are two major issues to consider. How much benefit do you want when you retire? And how much do you want to leave behind when you pass away? It's gonna be a great matchup either way, and the choice is yours. 
which one is gonna lead you to the finish line. Thank you, Ryan. Tough matchup indeed. This is a lot to remember. So if you ever need a refresher, there is an annuity options e-learning on our website. All right, your money matters. And with retirement on the horizon, the big question you're probably asking is, can you afford to retire? Members have told us, if I only knew I would have planned better. Well, we want you to be prepared. So please consider these three very important topics when deciding if you can afford to retire. First, did you know your pension is not designed to be your only source of income when you retire? Most retirees have multiple sources of income to help them meet their financial goals during retirement. When choosing retiree health insurance, you're going to be responsible for the entire cost of your insurance. There is no longer employer assistance. Also, there are no special tax tables for retirees. Your taxes will most likely be lower because your income is lower. Let's check back in with our ASRS news team for more information on can you afford to retire? ASRS News presents The Smart Shopper. With retirement on the horizon, the big question is, can you afford to retire? Our own Smart Shopper, Kathy, is covering the story for us live at the scene. Kathy? That's right, Athena. Many of you have been asking, can I afford to retire? So I did some investigating, and it's rather shocking what I turned up. All too often, when we're calculating how much we've saved and how much our pension and Social Security will be, we don't always think about other expenses we'll have during retirement. When you retire, you won't likely be pulling in the same income that you are accustomed to now. In fact, this chart compares your years of service to the replacement value of your pension. Even with 25 years of service, you will only receive just over half of what your regular wage was. It's important to think about how taxes and health insurance can impact your net retirement benefit. Your contributions are tax deferred, lowering your taxable income while employed. Your pension is paid from those tax deferred contributions, so it is considered taxable income. I've heard members say they'll get a tax break when they retire. Well, there's no special tax tables for retirees. Standard tax tables apply to everyone. It's just that your income is less, so the tax will be lower. While employed, your employer is paying toward your insurance premiums. Since you are no longer working, you won't be on employee health insurance and won't have your employer's financial help in paying toward your premium. Now you will pay the entire retiree insurance premiums, which are generally more than employee insurance. Also consider your Medicare status. Non-Medicare retiree health insurance is not federally funded like Medicare, so it is more expensive. If you retire before becoming Medicare eligible, you'll want to be prepared for this higher cost. When you become Medicare eligible, your premiums will go down. Most retirees don't rely on their ASRS pension alone. If you haven't already, you may also want to look into any voluntary supplemental savings programs offered by your employer. Consider individual retirement accounts, deferred compensation or personal savings and investments that can help cover costs during retirement. Don't forget your Social Security benefit will also increase your monthly net income when you're eligible and decide to collect it. I'm Kathy, your smart shopper, always here for you to help you save a buck. Back to you, Athena. Thank you, Kathy. Sure gives us a lot to think about. There is a lot to consider when deciding if you can afford to retire. Fortunately, there's a wealth of information on our Retirement Central tab of the website. 
For a quick review, check on any of those links and get additional information that will help you determine if you can afford to retire. We will now discuss the Service Purchase Program. This program allows you to purchase additional years and or months of service credit for employment that you have had with other public entities. There are usually two reasons members want to purchase service. First, to increase your retirement benefit by increasing the service part of your formula, or maybe they want to reach the next multiplier in that benefit formula. The second reason might be to reach your normal retirement faster. There are some requirements to be eligible to purchase service. If your membership is on or after July 1, 2010, you must have at least five years of service with ASRS in order to purchase. This requirement does not apply if your membership was before July 1, 2010 or if you are purchasing forfeited service. You must be actively contributing or on ASRS long-term disability. You will not have the option to purchase service when you are collecting a retirement benefit. If your membership date is before July 20th, 2011, there is no limit on purchasing service. If your membership date is after July 20th, 2011, there is a five-year limit to each type of service with the exception of forfeited service. There are many types of service you can purchase. We will discuss them starting with military service. And first of all, for any of you who have been active in our military, we do thank you for your service. Now you can purchase military service as long as it was active military service, reserve, and or National Guard. As long as you are not eligible to receive a benefit from the military for that time. There may be an exception if you are eligible or receiving a non-regular reserve guard benefit. And for more information, go to our website or review the Road to Retirement Guidebook. You can purchase service from other public employers anywhere in the country, but you must have been in a paid position. There are two kinds of other public service. The first is with any non-ASRS employer. That includes city, state, county, federal, or U.S. territories. Full-time, part-time, seasonal, temporary. As long as you are not eligible to a retirement benefit from that entity, you can purchase any months or years you worked for them. Some examples are substitute teaching in New York, or working on campus at the University of Minnesota. Maybe you were a lifeguard in Florida. The second type of service is other public service non-participatory. This is if you worked for an ASRS employer and contributions were not withheld. This includes possibly being a lifeguard for the city of Glendale or substitute teaching in Tucson. The next type of service purchase is leave of absence. If you took an approved leave of absence from an ASRS employer and returned to work for that same ASRS employer, you can purchase up to one year per occurrence. So here's an example. You worked for an ASRS employer, took an approved leave, and then came back to that same employer. There is a maximum of five separate leave of absence occurrences. To purchase these types of service, there are factors involved. The calculation factors are your current age, service, and current salary, plus the amount of time you are wanting to purchase. So you can see that the cost is specific to each member based on their factors. You can use the service purchase estimators on our website to get a ballpark idea of the cost. Now let's look at forfeited ASRS service. This is if you worked for an ASRS employer and contributed to ASRS, but refunded your account when you left the employer. You can purchase that forfeited service back into your account. And there is no limit to the amount of forfeited ASRS service that you can purchase. 
the cost to purchase service previously forfeited is the amount that you were refunded plus any interest that would have accrued on the balance to date. Remember, to buy service purchase, you must be actively contributing. Service purchase is not for everyone. However, there is no obligation if you want to find out about the cost. You can make your final decision when you get the invoice. To make a service purchase request, go online, sign into your secure account, and click the service purchase link. From there, you can learn about the different types of service to purchase and learning how purchasing service can benefit you. To initiate the service purchase, click the Start My Service Purchase Request button. Choose your service type and follow the screens to submit your request. Shortly after you submit your request, the ASRS will send you an acknowledgement message with further instructions. You will receive an invoice from the ASRS about 15 days from the time you submit the required documentation if applicable. Once you receive the invoice, you can purchase some of the time, all of the time, and that's with a five-year limit possibly, or none of it. If you choose to purchase, you can select your preferred payment method. Payments need to be received within 60 days of the request. This information is sent with the invoice. Payment methods include writing an after-tax check, rolling over from a qualified retirement account or payroll deduction. Once paid, the service is credited to your account. When you initiate a service purchase request, you are looking to find out how much it will cost you. You are not committing to doing the service purchase. Once you receive the invoice, you can just let it expire. There are some important timelines you should know as you approach retirement. Do you ever feel like you could use a forecast of what to do or expect from now until you retire? Well, Courtney on the ASRS News Team, she's got you covered. Let's take a look. ASRS News Weather. Let's check in on weather with meteorologist Courtney in the ASRS Weather Center. Thank you, Steve. Today is another beautiful day in Arizona, but there's a high pressure system of decision making causing extreme heat as you get closer to retirement. There is some relief in sight. Here's our 12 month forecast of what we provide to beat the heat as your retirement date approaches. You'll want to be prepared for scattered data showers ahead, so grab your umbrella and get ready for a downpour of valuable health insurance information by registering for and attending a Know Your Insurance meeting, where health insurance vendors will provide specific details for each of the ASRS plans offered and answer any questions you may have. Look out for a whirlwind of decision-making within six months of retirement. Attend Route 4, next exit retirement to help keep your feet firmly planted on the ground. Regardless of what it's like outside, conditions will be perfect for completing your retirement application online up to six months prior to your retirement date. It can take 45 to 90 days for the ASRS to process your pension payment and partial lump sum if elected. To protect you from the storm, in about five to 10 days, an estimated pension payment is dispersed. An estimated payment is meant to tide you over while we complete processing your retirement. After that, there's a 100% chance of a monthly pension payment on or around the first of the month for the rest of your life. That's all for today's weather. Back to you, Steve. Thank you for that helpful forecast, Courtney. Signing off, I'm Steve. And I'm Athena. This has been ASRS News, your retirement source. It is our responsibility to keep you informed, and it is your responsibility to stay informed as members of the ASRS retirement system. 
Did you know you can apply for your retirement online? You can submit your online retirement application up to six months prior to your retirement date, up until the actual day of your retirement. Log in to your ASRS Secure account and under Apply Now, click on the Retirement link to start your application process. This process is easy, convenient, and secure. There's no need to worry or hurry because the system will walk you step by step through the application and pop-ups will appear with relevant information. Keeping us informed of your changes will ensure that we are able to communicate with you whenever it is needed. Many changes can be made simply by logging into your secure account. Pre-retirement you can update, change your contact information, beneficiary details, and even customize your personal benefit estimates. Ultimately, the My ASRS account is how you apply for retirement, so you're going to want to familiarize yourself with it before then. Post-retirement, you will still use this account for contact updates, direct deposit updates, and if you want to change your tax elections or print your payment history. You always have access to Member Secure Messaging where you can ask questions and submit documents to the ASRS. There is a video on the Member Secure Messaging process under the Members tab on your website. The ASRS updates the website with a lot of information. You should be informed, so stay up to date by visiting our website where you can find recent newsletters, the bill tracker, news releases, ASRS group insurance guide, and more. Remember that there is a wealth of information for you on our public website to help guide you on your journey towards retirement. Check back often for the latest updates and to keep current on this account. So this concludes our Route 3 Destination Insight meeting. The next meeting in the series is Route 4, next exit retirement when you are within about six months of your retirement. Remember ASRS provides a wealth of information on our website and we are here for you every step of the way as you are on the road to retirement.